Hello everyone, it's Melody and your host, and this is Author Nation Interviews, where we bring you the expertise you need to succeed as an author. And today we're talking about getting in front of more audiences to sell more books. Now, as part of this vibrant Author Nation community, you can gain access to a wealth of resources at authornation.online. Now, let me introduce our guest. Jackie Lipin's mission is to help leaders entrepreneurs, coaches, and authors like you find and secure their next clients by getting in front of more audiences faster. Her speaker, Tunity, the speaker and leader resource company, has researched hundreds of thousands of speaker lead contacts and has curated them to meet their needs. Jackie's Speaker Tunity Members Only Program provides leads for live and virtual events and meetings, conferences, podcasts, radio shows, video casts, video summits, even TEDx events, and more. Speaker Tunity is the ultimate speaker toolbox, the one stop shopping for the speaker. And if you're an author, you should be a speaker. And for the past 12 years, Jackie's radio podcast tours have helped nearly 400 luminaries, leaders, filmmakers, and authors grow their businesses sell more books, create viewership, and change more lives by introducing them to up to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts. Her clients have included Don Miguel Ruiz, Marie Diamond, James Twyman, and more. She's booked more than 10,000 interviews and speaking engagements for her clients. Welcome, Jackie, and how are you today? I'm delighted to be here, Melody. And it's so wonderful to be, have an opportunity to see how we can help your folks get booked. Absolutely. So um, I have so many questions for you, Jackie. First off, just tell me a little bit about the mission of Speaker Tunity. Just a quick, you know, why did that get going in the first place? What was your what was your purpose? Well, the mission is we help leaders get booked faster, easier and in more places. And the way that came about was I was doing radio podcast tours. Um, as you just talked about, where we introduce authors and leaders to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts with a minimum guarantee of 30 interviews. We started that about 15 years ago, about five years into it, people came to me and said, can you book me for speaking gigs? And I said, I don't want to do that, but I know where they are. So why don't I just tell you? And so we created the very first Speaker Tunity product, Speaker Tunity Speaker Leads, which is a you know smorgasbord of leads all over North America. That one was really for transformational and, and leaders and, and authors. And then we started expanding. We added on new resources, uh, just a pod, two different podcast um, products. One that gives you life enhancing and life changing. One that gives you um, B two B. And then there was another one that we would give you virtual summits. That you, you know we're the only people that gather up all the virtual summits every month. And then people wanted conferences, and so we created a product where we've aggregated all the calls for speakers in one place. Um, and then people wanted TEDx's because their books went them to a TEDx. So we we have the world's largest global TEDx directory. So things just really expanded. You know, we did regional directories and niche specialty directories with meetings all across North America. We just figured that people needed to have the leads that they didn't have to do it themselves. You know, authors, leaders, and experts, we're so busy doing so many other things. If we could cut down the time that it takes them to do that, at least more time to do other things. And so that's how we created it. That's that's brilliant. Now, it's crucial for authors and entrepreneurs to speak on a variety of these platforms. Can you tell me, like, you know, just in case people aren't sure, why? Why is it so crucial that we don't just do podcasts, but we also do, you know, virtual summits and TEDx and, and all the other opportunities? Well, because you don't want your, your book to languish and not have any sales. You know, you yeah. can send it out online, but the single most effective way to get anybody to buy your book is when they see you or meet you. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're in front of them on a podcast, on a summit, on a stage, at a meeting, they get a sense of you. They get a feel for you. They understand. You get to explain to them why your book is so fantastic. And that makes that connection so that they are inspired to then buy your book. So, and then of course, if your book is a leader into a bigger business, well, now you're talking about building your client base, using your book as a leader. And by the way, a book will get you booked faster and easier than anything else. So yeah. if you're on a list, that a speaker, you know, a booker is looking at, and you've got the book, you're going to be at the top of that list. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, book will get you booked. 
that's a, you need to use that everywhere. A book will get you booked, or maybe I need to use that everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, you know, authors and entrepreneurs who are listening to this and they're like, well, I'm not doing it now. How, like, what's, what's the fastest way to get into this? What is, you know, how you know, should I go on podcast first? What's the fastest way for me to increase my book sales? So I'm a big believer that you start with podcasts because it's the least, least barrier to entry. You're going to get more opportunities because, you know, com it's conferences and meetings, you know, they're more discerning. There are more competition for them. The, and, and by the way, there are over three and a half million podcasts today. Um, so you can find a few that are going to take you. Um, and the other factor that I love about it is because if you are at all intimidated about getting on the stage, if you give a booker 20 questions to ask, which every author should do, and that is your road roadmap to where you want to take the, the listener, it, it can also be the roadmap of your signature speech. So by the time that you've delivered that content 20, 30, 40 times, you are going to be so much more confident about standing on a stage. Well, I did this. I did over 100 interviews for my last book, which was the best spiritual book of the year at the International New Age Trade Show, trade show the year it came out. I did 100 interviews. And but by the time I was done, I knew where my sound bites were. I knew the, the sequence of what I was delivering. I knew what stories I wanted to tell. And so I just was able to transfer the stage instantly with a way greater confidence and ability to deliver it effectively. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, now here's the thing. So podcast first. So you've answered that question. A lot of, uh, a lot of authors are like, okay, so how do I, how do I get started? How do, you know, they get, they get a lot of no's for example, or they're not quite sure you know, what to say in the pitch or, or all of these things. So what advice would you give them if they're just starting out? What are some easy steps or strategies? Well, the first thing you have a really compelling pitch letter. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, just, I want to get on your show. This is what I talk on. That pitch letter should really have the hook. Um, you know, what, what makes this compelling? Um, are, are you solving a problem in the world? Do you have to, uh, anecdotes and stories to tell? Do you have your hero's journey story? Do you have, um, you know, if, is it something going on in the world that's in, with the Z guys? Does it apply to pop culture? Um, um, you know, uh, package it to be what's interesting about this now. And so the, the beginning of the letter should be that. The next part of the letter should be your credentials, your book, and all the other reasons why, you know, you are the expert that you are, you know what you know what what your results that you've gotten the history the credentials your expertise and whatever it might be um and then the last part is really what are you going to speak on and you're going to tell them okay this is a topic and then here are the bullet point takeaways what is your audience going to learn in this interview now when you package that all up um, and you can, add, you know, you, there are way, nice ways you can also add a, a podcast introductory sheet, which is glossy and pretty. It's a one page that talks about your bio and, and what the um, uh, what your um, excuse me, your your uh, topics are. Um, and we can help you that with that over at Speaker Tunity. Um, You know, you can package this really up nicely. You're going to basically impress them more than just sending a pitch letter. It's a justification why. And put a subject line on it that actually kills. It should say guest for your show, colon, and put the name of the person at the beginning. And then a summary of what the outcome is that that audience is going to get. Um, and so that's the most effective way. So you're going to and, and pick the right shows. Now, here's a little hint. Do not pick the shows at the top of the iTunes list or, you know, or, or um, uh, iHeartRadio or any of the others, because they're the hardest to get on. Find the ones down in the middle and in the lower. And then also, you know, get on podcast people, you know, you know, you, there's, there's just a check around. You might, you might belong to mastermind groups. You might belong to coaching groups. You might want, you're going to find people that you know that have podcasts and take advantage of those as well. So that's your lowest hanging fruit. Um, yeah. and if you're going to go out into the world and then, you know, then then you can um, go looking on those different kinds of uh, podcast uh, pod uh, catchers, as they call them. 
but they're not the only ones. I mean, you can look at internet radio and you can look at, um, you know, healthyradio.net or um, uh, um, uh, blog, blog talk and um, uh, mm, uh, there's, there's another big one that has internet radio. It'll, it's not coming in right now, but when it comes to you. Yeah. Also, also, yeah, no, great. And you you made a couple, you Voice said a couple America. of really that's what it was. Voice America. It was Voice America. Voice America. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. You said you're gonna pull out a couple of things. One, you talked about their audience. I see a lot of authors pitching their book rather than pitching topics that the podcast audience will be interested in. So this is as a podcast host, I see this, right? I get, you know, here's the author, here's the book, you should have them on the show. And it's like, no, <laughs> here's here's who your audience is and here's what they need and here's how I can provide that. I think that's a real, you said that, um, you talked about that. And I think that's a really important piece. And let me address people who are memoir writers. Mm -hmm. You really need to have a memoir that with a message. Pull out the messages that your memoir teaches. And that's what your focus is on. Yes, your story is fantastic, whatever it might be. But what is the learning from, from what you went through? And that's what you're going to convey to this next audience. Yeah, absolutely. And that can be done through pulling stories out of your memoir. And, you know, picking a theme, picking the stories from the memoir, talking about the lessons, right? You can put that together and then people will be more interested in your memoir. Um, so how can a podcast tour or a radio tour help a, an author launch their book? Well, you know, the most effective, you know, marketing a book can be a marathon, but you really want to get out of the gate quick. And the best way to do that, because it's going to really, you know, help drive your book to the top of the, you know, the numbers, it's going to sell more books so you can justify, you know, more speaking engagements, all of those kinds of things. So getting out of the gate quickly is a way to do that. And a, and a podcast tour, you know, is a means when you're going to get 30, 40, 50 interviews right off the bat, not only that, it's going to give you great SEO. Because now you're going to be on all these podcasts and, you know, people are going to find you more easily. Um, if a booker is looking for you and they're going to, the first thing they're going to do is want to see how much visibility you have. You can then put on all these uh, podcasts and radio shows on your website. You can promote to your own community. Wow, I'm on this one, this one, this one, this one. And they're getting more impressed. And, well, if I haven't bought the book, I to buy it because all these people are interested. So it's a really good way to create a whirlwind of of um excitement and buzz so that you can really um write it into other things yeah excellent thank you so is there like is there any like one secret way to get in front of you know hundreds of thousands of people uh you know as quickly as possible i think uh, you know a podcast tour is a way to do that Okay. Um, because when you start adding up the numbers of shows, uh, you know, listeners on those shows, uh, yeah. you know, if you get one show that might have 15, 20, 30,000 people, those numbers can add up pretty quickly. Yeah. So, um, and you know, there are smaller podcasts out there. I mean, I suggest you not be a snob uh, because, um, you know, you're going to miss out on things because it only takes, you know, you can be talking to a smaller audience, but if it's the right audience, you might sell a lot more books than if it's a bigger audience and maybe they're not all ideal for you. So Yes, yes. And the smaller audiences can be more loyal. So I've I've noticed that uh, sometimes you're, there's a smaller audience, but you get a lot more response from that smaller audience than you do from a larger, more passive audience. Yeah, there's something to be said for intimacy. And maybe asking Q and A's and things like that um, that creates more of a um, a, a loyalty factor that works. Exactly, exactly. So, do you have any success stories? You've done this for a long time. Can you give us any success stories around you know someone who maybe thought they couldn't do it and they had better results than they thought they were going to get? So one of my favorite stories is a guy, a guy named Gary Salyer. And Gary was a, is a, um, a relationship coach, uh, but he was more of an academic and really didn't have much presence in the consumer marketplace. 
And so um, he came out with a book um, and, uh, and so we did a radio podcast tour for him. And first of all, he said he talked to about between three and five million people in those podcasts. He not only sold a ton of books, but it filled his coaching campaign a program. And he was still getting um, you know, clients off that months, months, even a year later, because those podcasts, you know, people will be re-listening to them or they'll find them, they'll discover them late. So that's one of my absolute favorites. And from a speaking gig, you know, um, I, I love the fact that people who were just really trying to get out started to really have some presence. I have one speaker booker who books for people just in their marketplaces. She has bought 28 speaker Tunity cities directories because it makes it so much easier for her when she is booking somebody in the market, she doesn't have to do any of the research. Yeah, absolutely. I love that story. And I love that you said he sold books, but he also built his coaching business. Because one of the things that I find authors sometimes don't quite put together well, it, again, when they pitch me, they're pitching their book rather than saying, I have something your audience would be interested in. And then when they, you know, when they get on the show, it's all about, okay, here's my book, here's my book, here's my book. And then at the end, it's like, well, what do you, you know, it's like, oh, just put a link to my book from Amazon. It's like, look, this is the first time an audience has ever heard of you. It, you know, they're not necessarily going to hear you once and run out and buy your book. So what advice do you have in that regard? Well, one of the first things I'd say is educate the podcast host uh, with a really good media kit. Now, when we do these media kits, here's what we put in. We put in a main release about what the subject of this of this uh, interview is going to be about. Then we put in a full bio of the uh, client because we want people to know who they're dealing with, what, how, what their story is, um, you know, not just a three paragraph, you know, these are my achievements. Um, then uh, that three little, you know, and then three paragraphs or m maybe four that the host will read on the air when you come on the air. So don't leave it to them. Then 20 questions you want to be asked in the order you want to be asked them. And then the last page we call the learn more page. And that's how the public can engage you. So um, there, there's the book link and this is all in bullet point. And then there's your coaching program, your free gift offer, your upsell, and then your social media links and your website. That package, first of all, really helps the 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 podcast or radio show host market you that's yes. really important yeah um, uh, and I, I have to say when people send me a, a media kit with all that information and a headshot and questions they want to ask oh they make my job so much easier it's so easy to say yes to them yeah it's really really an important factor and then just you know and then be a good partner Start, you know, if they send you the links, you send them out. Um, and, you know, that also helps because it spreads the word, you know, because if you turn out to be a bad partner, podcasters talk amongst themselves. You get a reputation and nobody's going to put you on. So be a good player and you'll see more of those opportunities. I get I get emails from people say, hey, so-and-so told me that, that I need to have you on my show. That's the kind of thing you need to have happen. Exactly. And that, that's what you want. You want to get to the place where people are coming to you saying, hey, so-and-so said I should have you on the show. All oh, right. I saw you on somebody else's podcast and I thought it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about, you You have a step-by-step um, a, a -step, uh, program for people. Can you just tell us a little bit about how, how to connect with you, you know, what how you can support people, how they might start. So I got a couple of great giveaways that are really going to help you. One is called 20 Factors That Tips the Scales in Your Favor to Get Booked on a Podcast. This is going to give you some really simple tips of how to put yourself ahead of the, at the head of the class. Um, and the second one is 12 Things to Say in Your Speaker Proposal Letter that's going to get you booked. So if you're going to write yourself, you know, I mean, writing a pitch letter for a, radio, a podcast and radios is different than writing a, a proposal letter to get you speak. Um, you, you know, they, they have some, some of the same elements, but they're different. And if you get this tool, this is going to really shortcut your ability to write a powerful pitch letter to get you booked on speaking engagements. 
Brilliant. I will make sure both of those are in the show notes for everyone. And so you can grab those. I really appreciate your time today, Jackie. So final words to the audience, what might be like the next quick action they could take or the next couple of quick actions they could take to like start this, start this journey for themselves? Well, I encourage you to come on over to Speakertunity. You're going to find, you know, an easy shortcut to a lot of the things that you want. Um, if you're interested in doing the Conscious Media Relations um, the podcast tour, you uh, I know in the show notes, you'll have a link there. You can go on over, set a meeting with me, and then we'll go over and see if your book is a match and we can really serve you and your audience. That's the bestest way. And if you just want to reach me, you can reach me at, uh, at Jackie at ConsciousMediaRelations.com. And I'll drop that in the show notes as well. Thank you, Jackie, so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, thank you for joining me today on Author Nations with Jackie. Uh, we hope you found this comp this conversation both inspiring because I think authors really need to be inspired in some ways to like, you know get over the fear of putting themselves out there and you know promoting themselves and eventually their book. And also, you've received some practical uh, steps today for doing that, so you can find new and larger audiences. Now, don't forget to visit authornation.online to support your journey to success as well. And we value your feedback and your support. So if you valued this episode, please take a moment to comment or leave a review. And especially don't forget to share it with someone who will find it insightful. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Keep writing, keep creating, and keep sharing your stories with the world.